Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming today. Um, and this uh, presentation is about building ethical AI, the power of, of open source and education. And basically, uh, what I will share with you today is about our activities uh, at Linux Foundation AI uh, and the Generative AI Commons, which is another, an, an organization uh, within the Linux Foundation AI organization. And I would like it to be interactive. If you have questions, please ask the best uh, questions. Whoever asks the best question will get a t-shirt. <laughs> so pay attention. Um, I, I would like to share a, a few words about myself so you understand why I'm qualified for this, uh, for this talk. So basically, I started my professional career, I did a PhD in computer science in Ben Gurion University in Israel. After that, I joined Amdocs uh, and uh, worked uh, in the product management domain for several years. After Amdocs, my corporate days, I moved and started two startups, one in uh, the patent domain and the other one in the uh, privacy compliance domain. And currently, I'm doing mostly consultancy, um, which means that if you need help, I'm here, or if you are hiring for a full time, I'm also in the market. Um, but in between all of that, I also worked on Linux Foundation AI. And basically, I was one of the founding members of this organization. We started it in 2018. And I, uh, I've been there, like redlining the bylaws of this foundation and then leading the foundation as the TAC, uh, Technical Advisory Council Chair for a couple of years. Um, back in those days, I started the MLOps uh, uh, group and led this group for uh, a couple of years. And also we started what we call the Trusted AI Committee, which is a committee that is focused on trusted and responsible AI. And I joined this committee when we started it I think 2018, late 2018, maybe 2019, and I'm still a, an active member of this um, of this uh, um, committee. And lately, um, like two, three months ago, we started the Gen AI uh, Commons, which is an, the, the other organization. And in the Gen AI Commons, I lead the Education and Outreach Committee. Um, so the entire uh, discussion or the entire talk today will touch all of these. Uh, I will share with you what LFAI is, LF, LFAI and data is, and uh, what is the uh, generative AI commons is, and we'll finish with call for action and participation. Um, so let's start with what is LFAI and data. Initially it was LFAI DL, and then we changed it to LFAI, LFAI, and then LFAI data. We integrated the data uh, side. And basically, uh, it's a nonprofit, of course, Linux Foundation a, a, or, a organization that hosts critical components of the global AI and data technology uh, infrastructure. It brings together the world's top developers and uh, end users and vendors uh, to identify and contribute to the projects and initiatives that address industry challenges for benefits of all participants. Um, very long dis uh, description, uh, but I will break it into some more specific things. So on the, LF, um, on the LFAI and data, we have the projects. We currently have 58 projects. Um, AI and data projects, open source, of course. And we have the organization or the uh, governance bodies and committees. So on the governance side, we have the uh, governing board, of course. Uh, and un under the governing board, we have the outreach, legal, strategy, and budget committees. And on the other side, which I think is more interesting, uh, there is the technical advisory Council or committee, and uh, this this uh, uh, committee or council meets every other week, 
and uh, approves the projects and, and basically does all the work, the actual work. And under the TAC, we have several other uh, uh, committees. Uh, the latest one is the, the Generative AI Commons, uh, the Trusted AI. Both of them are pretty active, uh, as I mentioned earlier. We, el we have the MLOps, uh, MLSecOps, which is kind of new, like two years, I think, BINAI, DataOps, and ML Workflow and Interop. So plenty of activity. And basically, um, the community that is part of Linux Foundation AI and data could either contribute to specific open source projects or be active on those uh, working groups. Um, and this is where I am. I started, when, I, when we started Linux Foundation AI, I worked on one project uh, that was the first project that uh, uh, we basically started the foundation with. And now I don't work on projects, I personally only do committees. Um, some key, key stats, so uh, founded in March uh, 18, I've been there, uh, nine, committees, nine active committees, uh, 650 uh, contributing organizations, uh, so not all of them are members, only like 10%, like six, 66 members, and we have members in different uh, um, tiers, um, 22.6 million line of codes, uh, line of code, sorry, um, across 50, 58 uh, uh, projects, uh, 30,000 contributors, active contributors. We have overall something like 100,000 uh, contributors and uh, many GitHub stars. Um, this is, uh, uh, these are the current projects that we run on uh, Linux Foundation AI and uh, data, and you can see you can see my, uh, this one, Acumus was the first project. Now this project is in archive, uh, uh, archive uh, tier, I would, uh, I would call it. Uh, and we have like, we have the graduated, incubated, and sandbox tiers. And you can see plenty of them. This, this uh, list or this uh, um, um, figure was, derived from this thing. If you're familiar with the LFAI and data landscape, which is something that we stole, it's open source, we stole from CNCF. So this is an interactive tool that allows, allows you to see all the projects and to like play with it and, and uh, you can uh, uh, um, use different uh, um, filters to see whatever you want to see. Um, this is the, the QR code is to the landscape and if you're interested, I encourage you to, to try it and play with it. Um, let's move on. Um, in the rest of the, uh, of the talk, so I explained Linux Foundation AI in general. Now I will go to uh, the trusted AI and then to the commons. So what is trusted AI or what is the trusted AI committee? The trusted AI committee is focused on everything trusted, responsible AI. Um, we do basically um, several things uh, on the promotion, promoting the trusted and responsible AI. We have uh, webinars, we run a Linux Foundation Trusted AI Day, um, we are about to start a podcast, um, write blogs, uh, um, and uh, um, we run all the technical integration between the different uh, projects. We also host uh, several projects, open source projects in the um, trusted uh, uh, domain. And the current projects that we have, uh, advers adversarial uh, robustness toolbox, uh, AI explainability, explainability 360, AI fairness 360, and intersectional fairness. And we also work on the AI software build, bill of materials. This is a, a also an open source activity um, to create a bill of material for trusted AI implementation of uh, open source projects, um, models, and stuff like that. This is, um, I mentioned the technical integration here. 
So this is, oh, sorry, this is the uh, technical integration. And in the past, we also uh, worked on the principles for trusted AI. Um, I don't remember when we published it, probably like four years ago. And in general, the trusted AI committee, when we started it, it was pretty hard to schedule meetings because no one cared. What is trusted AI? What is responsible AI? What do you want? And basically in the past few months, there is so much interest and, and we moved from, sometimes we have a meeting one, once a month to, okay, we have a meeting every two weeks or more than that and a lot of activity coming in and, and participation from uh, um, different organizations and different projects come, okay, help us. What do we need to do in order to be responsible, in order to, uh, to be a like, good player in this uh, domain? So there is a lot of uh, traction uh, in this uh, trusted AI uh, community. Uh, let's, let's talk a, a little bit about the generative AI comments. By the way, any questions so far? Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, yeah, but no, 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 no one really noticed uh, or cared about it too much. And now with ChatGPT and, and all the hallucinations and, and the problems that we see, like it's, it's much more visible. So this is why uh, we get more, more traction and, and more activity. Okay, so the generative AI commons, uh, uh, this is a, a, an initiative that we started, uh, I think three months ago, uh, just a new initiative and uh, uh, still, still like trying to understand what we are and, and why we are doing that. Um, basically to promote um, um, the, let's say, uh, trustworthy AI, generative AI, uh, and to do like a, um, community driven open membership initiative represented by non profits, academia, industry, and uh, natural, in a natural forum, Linux Foundation AI. Um, we decided to, um, this is our mission statement. Um, but we decided basically to run this activity in four different work streams. So we have um, four leaders for each work stream and uh, each work stream is focused on different things. So the first one frameworks, um, this is the, uh, maybe the uh, original uh, uh, work stream um, focused on trusted responsible AI. So this work stream is collaborating quite a lot with the Trusted AI Committee as well. Uh, they work on something really interesting, a model openness framework, and I will present it in, in a little bit more details in, in a minute. We have the applications. So everything that is on the application layer uh, is another work stream, and uh, uh, you can see uh, Austin AI applications, uh, all the vector databases, uh, agents, and so forth. And uh, we have the next, uh, the models and data. So everything that, that is associated with models, Austin models and the data associated with the models. Initially we started separate and then we decided, we, we, we realized that they are like one thing. So we, we combine them. And the last um, um, work stream, which is the best because this is mine, <laughs> Uh, is the education and outreach. And basically um, what we do in the education and outreach is to, again, promote the uh, responsible and trust, uh, trustworthy AI to um, educate the developer community and the general public and to basically uh, promote anything associated with the generative AI commons with um, whatever their target uh, audience is, and also to work with um, 
legislative uh, orga organizations and to promote open source and open science in uh, uh, the different uh, uh, countries and uh, organizations or whatever it is or European. Uh, um, so I said that I will say something about the model openness framework. So this is the open, uh, uh, modern openness framework. It's basically uh, coming in in order to reduce the confusion about what is open and uh, what is open source versus open, just open or open science. And what we basically do, we take into account all the different steps and all the different uh, um, elements in building um, this, uh, uh, building an LLM or a, a generative AI uh, um, solutions and we score them and we give them different tiers or different levels like bronze, silver and gold and this should represent how open they are. So this is something that we started to work on very recently, like a few weeks ago. And uh, um, I, I think this, is, this will be something pretty important for the community. Okay, let's move on to the education and the outreach. So this is half of the team of uh, uh, the education and outreach committee. Uh, basically what you see here, um, in one of our sessions, I decided that I want to do uh, introductions between the team. I asked everyone to send me three, three uh, sentences about themselves and I generated uh, with daily their pictures and everyone presented themselves. So currently you, you see here, how many, 12? Uh, we have uh, something like 25 active members. Uh, we meet every other week uh, on Wednesday morning. Um, and we basically, all of us are volunteers and we promote the things that we believe we want to promote. It's an open source uh, uh, organization. So this is, this is the target audience or the uh, even um, um, ordered, uh, uh, prioritized the target audience. So first and foremost, we target the developers and users then the media, because we believe that if we can convince the media about the importance of open source and open science and so forth, they will help us to promote it with all the rest of the uh, audience. Uh, we want and will uh, um, create content that is uh, targeting the general public because we want to teach them or to, uh, to promote our ideas and make them understand why we are here and why they need to understand. I'll, I'll touch on it in, in, a, in a minute. And then all the rest, we also uh, uh, communicate with uh, government bodies. We already started to uh, put some, some documents about it as well. Um, these are our goals. Yes, go ahead. Good questions, uh, good question, sorry. We started, uh, we put two, two documents, was one with NIST and the other one, I don't remember, I, uh, but I have it here. And we didn't get any response, yes. So I don't know. It will take, probably will take time and it really depends. So if someone is excited about it and someone wants to do it, it will happen. If not, it doesn't happen. This is a, like a volunteering uh, community. Uh, so it really depends uh, about the, the members and what they are focused on. I, I read some articles about some of the insurance bodies. They are starting it. Like maybe I can get paid some of it. If you can talk about it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so the goals, as I mentioned earlier, promote an open source uh, first Gen AI mindset among developers. So developers are the first target. Uh, then promote responsible uh, use of generative AI. And this is all, all, also developers and 
policy makers and the regulatory bodies. Um, then the general public, this is where I am more passionate about. So uh, teach the de general public about generative AI and uh, in order to democ democratize it and also to give them the idea about the impact that generative AI can make on their lives. And this is, uh, I think, so all of us, we know what generative AI, we use uh, ChatGPT and we use, uh, but there is a huge part of the population or, uh, that doesn't know what ChatGPT is and never seen that. And maybe don't even care because they don't know, but I, I personally believe that it's important. Um, here are some, some activities that we already started uh, doing. So we started to create a taxonomy a glossary of uh, Gen AI and trusted responsible AI. So this is something, th this is work in progress. We have a few drafts uh, already. Um, we are working on a state of open source generative AI uh, report. And this, this is something that will be an annual report. So we, or at least we think it will be. <laughs> if, if uh, someone will take it. Um, and we also, also started to, to think about uh, um, the developer community and how to approach it. We, we are starting to, to do some uh, uh, um, research about it and uh, uh, maybe some of you will get some questionnaires uh, to, to answer. Um, so, Early on in, 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 the, in the presentation, I told you that I'm, I'm currently a consultant. I don't work for any, any company that is sponsoring my activity here. So why am I spending the time on this? In general, coming here from New York uh, in order to present it. Um, and basically, I have, uh, I have, I think, two good answers. <laughs> so I have three kids, and I believe that uh, um, this technology, generative AI and, and all of what we are talking about, can bring us to two different futures. One which is very nice and, and everyone is happy uh, on the left, right? And on the right, uh, something less exciting. Um, and I personally am pretty concerned about uh, generative AI. I think the, the risks are high. And I want to do two, two things. First, I want to educate myself. I want to be in the forefront of the technology and the, the information and basically to understand the risks myself. My son on the right is, almost, is a, a junior in high school, going to college in two years. I want to be able to help him to select the right uh, uh, um, thing to, to study because he, he wants to be a software developer. So as a software developer, what should he go to, to, uh, to do in, in college? Computer science or English maybe because to be a very good prompt engineer, maybe you need to, to have a better English. I don't know, but I, I, I want to be able to, to help them. And I want also, as I mentioned earlier, to um, educate the public so everyone is knowledge about, uh, has some knowledge about it. And basically, I believe that this will help us to uh, promote more safe uh, use of AI in general. If uh, only a few very large companies <laughs> are uh, promoting things that may be bad for the uh, entire society. This is something that I, I want to take part of and not leave to someone else to solve. So this is why I am part of this uh, activity. And just to finish, I, this is, as I mentioned uh, a few times in this discussion, in this uh, talk, I think that this is important. Uh, this is an open source organization, which means that we are open to contribution from anyone. And we would love you to join us and, and help us with our activities. I 
We'll finish with this slide on the left. Uh, this is a QR code of uh, Gem AI Commons uh, new website that we just launched. And all the information in order to connect, to join, to contribute is there. Um, this is one. And my uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, profile on the right. I'm happy to connect with everyone. And if you want to join us and, and contribute and you don't find the information there, I will I'll, I'll work with you on, on, the, uh, on everything that needed to be done. Uh, questions? Okay, I got, I got Wait, I, 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 I said it in the beginning, so I have shirts. The best question gets shirts. <laughs> and stickers. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, in the same way that the interest uh, in that committee has sprung up in the last year, interest in regulation has sprung up, right? And, and I, I think I come from the banking industry, and I kind of understand the mindset a bit of regulators where they want somebody that they can then tell what to do mm -hmm. and hold accountable. And the idea of open is somewhat contradictory to that because they can't hold anybody um, uh, accountable for, for you know, adhering to regulations. Um, but why don't you talk, just give us a little bit your thought on why open is better, um, why it's important to educate at this time when there's this much uh, uh, attention on it, and you know, why you know, uh, kind of getting support behind opening these tools up for access, and not, not just use, but also access, is kind of a better approach than saying, well, you better leave it in the hands of a few bodies that are heavily regulated by the government? So, good question, and we, <laughs> we had a long discussion about it yesterday in one of the sessions. Uh, there are arguments for both sides. I personally believe, like, in, like every other uh, uh, technology that we had in the past, open is better. This is my opinion, um, and I think that uh, we can maintain a responsible use of AI even if we go open. So this is, this is my opinion and of course it will democratize it and will not leave the power in a few hands. But uh, it's, uh, I, it's, I agree, it's an interesting yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. You get a t-shirt. <laughs> Hi, um, so we have a situation right now in general where college professors, high school professors are using things like Turnitin to detect AI. Um, not so much because the fact that they're using AI, but because they want the kids to learn the actual subject matter, right? It's, it's not so much a ethical question as whether it's a they're gonna learn it question. Looking forward, when they're on the, you know, in the job uh, world, uh, they're going to start being um, expected to use AI because the manager is going to say, hey, why aren't you using AI? It's much more efficient and you can, you know, save cost. Um, it seems like that's out of balance. You know, what's, what's the answer ethically to bridging the gap between an educational setting where you have to, you know what I'm saying, that to, you have to assert that, that you uh, attest that you have taught the kids this thing whereas they're not gonna use it the same way when they get out in the job world. You want to answer? Go ahead. <laughs> nice lead in. So <laughs> I work for a museum in Seattle, and this is something that we're confronting right now because this museum is in the aviation industry, and we have uh, junior high and high schoolers coming through and doing pilot training. Nice. And so what we've had to do, because we've, we use Turnitin, and that Turnitin detects the AI, we've had to write some policy around it, saying we understand and recognize that it's there, but for the intent and purpose of this particular course study, you can't use it. And I went out and did a search. There are no less than a half a dozen universities out there, Stanford, MIT, some of the others, that they have to look at the various courses 
and allow for that study to come in. So I think what we're going to see is that gap is going to get a lot shorter as kiddos come up and they go, well, it's part of this now. And it's industries that are going to have to catch up with it. But in academia, at least I see on, on the museum side, it's already happening. Yeah, my, my kids use ChatGPT all the time. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's new. There, there are no really guidelines how to, to do it. Um, I personally use it, like, half of my work I do with ChatGPT, and I think I'm so much more productive um, that it doesn't make sense not to use it. And by the way, many, many people that are not using it are staying behind, right? Or organizations that don't use it are staying behind. Uh, we still have the situation where, uh, and uh, maybe I didn't hear the answer the right way, uh, in the future, it's going to be, it doesn't matter if it's authentic or not, as long as it gets done. You know, what kind of um, ethical eddy in the current, you know, how does that little not uh, resolve itself out over time? So we've got a major issue. If I want to hire on or I want to socially engineer a new engineer, right? Uh, if I'm trying to get just the best talent from around the world, I am doing my best not to signal process for anything but the work. So at the point where I'm trying to hire the best, if I've gone or I've invented a training program for them to go through, at that point, when I unblind myself, only in that condition, at that point, the people that get passed, and they use this for MLH, a lot of these other things, fully automated process, but you cannot take the next step unless you can stand in front of a camera and explain to us everything as an individual and answer questions. There's a huge difference, right? We're not using, and this is something that I wish people would really pay attention to, like it's not for replacing learning and no one, there is no rational human being who's gonna chat GPT something they need to know to exist safely in the world. <laughs> um, and I think the last thing, if anyone is ever giving you a sort of preventative argument against technology, that's usually approaching moralism and you can remind them that when the printing press came out, a bunch of people said that books came from the devil because children would have their faces in it all day. This is no different. Yeah, and I don't have an answer yet. Uh, so we will see. And we will have to learn and, and adapt to the future, right? You get a t-shirt. <laughs> and you too, Sal. <laughs> any, any other question? Thank you very much for joining. And please, stickers and t-shirts.